Hi everyone. This is uh, Amy Bastic at the Wisconsin Dental Association. Thank you to all of you for joining us this afternoon for this program that uh, we've put together here. Um, Want to introduce Erica Valadez is another staff member on this call, and she's going to help moderate um, questions and information like that. So if you do have a question, you are welcome to um, raise your hand, interrupt. Um, feel free to uh, jump in. Uh, otherwise, you can put it in the chat window, and Erica will be monitoring that, and she will. Um, Make sure that all of your questions get answered through this this program. So, with that, I want to introduce Dr. Chuck Hajinian. He uh, is a general dentist out of the Delafield area. Um, he has quite a storied background. I had a lot of fun researching him. Uh, he did attend Marquette, um, got his dental degree from there. He is mostly retired, but still is involved in his clinic in a man managerial standpoint and just making sure things are going smoothly. Um, help transition his practice. He serves on a board for the Society of Orphan Armenian Relief, which I thought was really great. He's written books. He does stand up comedy, and he's also a well known impressionist painter. So quite an interesting background. Um, you know, everyone says dentists are very interesting people, and I tend to agree with that. <laughs> I love it. Um, but most importantly, he's been a WDA member for 45 years. Um, he's been caring for older adults at various nursing homes and retirement communities, all while running his practice. So what he's going to do today is kind of share with you how that all works um, and how you could do it yourself. So with further ado, Dr. Hajinian. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. For that uh, wonderful introduction, uh, as dentists, we're creative and we put our creative talents into all kinds of things. Uh, I'm going to be. Uh, I want this to be more of a discussion as opposed to a lecture. Um, I've been working with retirement communities for 45 years, and I'm going to try to condense uh, some of this into one hour. Uh, we're going to talk about the why and the how and the rewards of working with uh, retirement. So this is our plan for the talk. Uh, why would we consider including seniors in our practice? Uh, where do we do these services? Well, what are the regulations? Um, how do I incorporate this into our busy practice? What's the communications with family and facilities and the financial impact on your practice? This is uh, fee for service dentistry. So if you do have questions, feel free to uh, ask. We'll go to the next slide. Hang on. Okay. So there we go. So uh, you probably are aware of this that <clears throat> we have a million residents in Wisconsin that are over 65 years old. Uh, roughly, there's 3,700, probably close to 4,000 senior com communities in Wisconsin and uh, assisted living, memory care, nursing home, hospices, and they're growing regularly. Um, the, their ability to get dental care is limited by uh, their mobility, their cognitive issues, families uh, unable to get them there. Uh, their dental needs are, are horrific. Uh, the statistics basically Well, the statistics will show that 10% of existing fillings have recurrent decay and 68% of them have periodontal disease. So how does this fit into our, our busy practice? Well, every practice has cancellations and you can either take that time and surf the internet for two hours or you can grab your staff and go visit a home that's about 10, 15 minutes from you and see some residents that have been signed up for care by you. Also in my career, there's been four major recessions in the economy and when that happens, uh, there, there's just not enough patients to continue practicing at some times. Well, the retirement 
communities are filled with residents that need care and um, they're kind of a recession proof for your practice to keep you busy. So where do we where do we do this uh, dentistry? What are the different types of homes there? Well, they have a skilled skilled nursing home where facilities where they have uh, full time nurses and certified nursing assistants. Then you have community based residential facilities where you have five or more unrelated people living together. Uh, their nursing care is limited to six hours per week. If they need more care, they need to move into a skilled nursing home facility. Then you have residential care apartment complexes. That's for independent living people, people who drive a car can come and go. Um, they have the advantage of being able to, to use the beauty salon, the dental clinic, entertainment that's uh, at these uh, nursing home. Uh, programs. They also have the ability to move from residential into those uh, nursing home cares. Then you have adult family homes where four or few people live together. Again, uh, nurses are seldom present there, but they get su supervision and support, and uh, their care is limited to six hours uh, per week. The uh, federal government has regulations for nursing homes. And um, probably the most important is that they must assist in obtaining routine and 24 hour emergency dental care. Now, the nursing homes don't necessarily want to be involved with that. So they come to the dentist and say, uh, help us with this, help us fulfill these, these federal requirements. Uh, this requirement makes the facility directly responsible for the dental care needs of its residents. The facility must ensure that a dentist is available for the residents. And so they'll uh, put together a contract for a dentist who's interested in caring for the residents in that home. Uh, the state regulations are also uh, present in that a dental examination needs to be conducted within six months, either prior to or within six months of admission into a nursing home. Uh, they can be fined by the state if that's not done. Uh, there's a number of other issues that we can do as uh, to help these retirement communities out. One of the rules that was uh, passed a number of years ago, 2017, was um, Wisconsin law now allows dental hygienists to work unsupervised in the uh, in a nursing home. They can go on their own and see clean teeth, uh, brush dentures and care for the, the residents with their hygiene services. I call these uh, the good soldiers, these hygienists in the battle of gum disease and bodily infections. Uh, we can make a difference. Our hygienists can uh, go into these homes that we're contracting with uh, or they can go on their own and care for residents. Uh, they can report problems to the dentist and, and or find a dentist that they can talk to about uh, what they see. So um, here's, a, here's an example of a dental clinic that we work with at Luther Manor. What you do with these is uh, the home provides the Two operatories in this case, and an X ray arm that swings one way to the other. And um, we're able to do normal dentistry at this. They have a compressor suction. And um, some homes uh, have this, some do not. Some might be interested in having you uh, set something up and be their dentist. They would even possibly pay for a setup like this. So you can see the. Uh, the residents. You bring your staff and you bring your special instruments. Most of them have uh, autoclaves for you to sterilize your instruments while you're on staff, uh, while you're on site. Now, if they don't have a dental uh, clinic for you, what do you do? Well, you basically will work bedside with a resident in a wheelchair. Uh, you can have a reclining wheelchair where their head can go back. Uh, you can work in a room with a sink that's set aside as a multi-purpose room. 
while the resident's in their bed, some beds are adjustable. They can turn their head. This is obviously not ideal, but if you don't do the work, if you're not there to care for them, no one is. So uh, in this particular case, they might have a broken off tooth and you can smooth that tooth uh, with a, a portable dental unit or a, a dental a Dremel tool that has uh, wrapped sterile wraps on it. Um, so you can keep their teeth from cutting their gums or their tongue. You can also make dentures, bedside, chair side, in a wheelchair, and you can do adjustments. So um, we want the patients to be without pain. We want them to be infection free, to be able to chew their food. Many of them have uh, very expensive dental work in their mouths. So we wanna make sure we preserve that with good oral care. Um, basically in a, locations that have dental operatories, you can do what you normally do in your dental office, but you wanna be wise, judicious. Um, some of the residents uh, have issues with swallowing or they have problems uh, sitting in a chair for a long time. So you wanna, you want to evaluate how much the resident can take and what they can, what you can actually do. For those that don't have dental operatories, we bring in sterile instruments, we lay bibs down or trays, and we work uh, bedside. Uh, again, it's not ideal, but if we don't do it, then they're not going to get done. We can do cleanings again, sterilize instruments uh, placed on a tray, and uh, we com complete brushing and flossing also will take place. And uh, dentures, uh, residents can be transported to your office. Uh, if they can't, if it's not feasible, then the dentures could be made bedside. And I've done that throughout my career. Um, repairing cavities and damaged teeth. If there's no suction, there's no polishing, you cannot do fillings but you can place Cabot or IRM or some temporary material to keep the patients comfortable when you find a, a broken off tooth. Um, again, with a plastic covered dental tool, you can smooth a sharp edge. And in rare cases, teeth can actually be removed bedside. One of the tools, uh, wonderful tools in our toolbox is silver diamine, which is a liquid that's used worldwide to stop decay. The liquid is placed on a tiny brush and rubbed into the decayed area. This hardens the decay and turns the area black. It stops the decay process for about six months to a year. And I've used this successfully on dementia patients with severe gingival decay. There are risks involved, but the greater rewards, especially if you look at the alternative of sending this 95 year old frail person to an oral surgeon for general anesthesia and removal um, can be quite a bit uh, quite a bit of work but just like in your dental office you let the family know what can be done and why and you let the family make the decision so communication with the family is key uh, let them know the limitations of your work uh, suggest that they get to a dentist to check for interproximal decay with dental x-rays. Do you wanna discuss fees, uh, insurance limitations? They're used to Medicare paying for everything. Um, you discuss the health history, consult with the physician if necessary, talk to the nurses staff about uh, joint replacement, heart valves, blood thinners. Uh, the elderly have a complicated health history, so you wanna brush up on all of that. And you have in your, uh, your back pocket specialists that can help you out and uh, you wanna use them. So when I run into a difficult case, I let the patient, the family, and the oral surgeon and the medical doctor make the major decisions. Uh, this uh, is the best way to care for the resident. Dr. Hygienian, I have a question that came in. Yes. Yes. So, if nursing homes are required to either um, have a dentist, advisory dentist on staff, or have services for their residents, is the decision making on the dental care done by the nursing home or is it done by the family? 
Um, so when you do an examination and you see certain things, you you tell the family about that. The family is the one that makes the decision. And um, then if the family says, yes, we'd like those fillings done and they don't have a dental operatory, well, then they have to be transported to a dental office. And that's where the home comes in. The home then will arrange the, the transportation to get them there. Um, does that uh, does that answer? I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> so the relationship basically is with the, the power of attorney. Sometimes the resident themselves makes their own decisions. Sometimes it's their, their children. Uh, they have a power of attorney for health care power of attorney for finances, and sometimes you have to talk to both of those, those people. So um, one of the ways that dentists that we can help, it's called the in-service. And actually that's part of the federal regulations or state regulations that uh, they, the home must provide an in-service training for their staff. Um, so we present a PowerPoint, uh, which I have available, and uh, for cleaning and flossing the teeth with cognitively impaired residents. Um, how to clean and store dentures and partials, recognizing problems and reporting them. Um, how to look for lost dentures and partials. Uh, why good oral hygiene is important to the resident's health. The home can record you training the staff and then they can run that on other ships. And I want to mention for those listening, we're we're always looking for dentists that would like to work with us. If anybody would like to shadow and see what it's like to care for these residents, contact me and you'd be happy to uh, have you shadow one of our dentists on site. Uh, another way that uh, we can help is we uh, a program was started by Angie Stone, a, a dental hygienist out of Madison. And uh, it was called the brush and floss program. And this is where a hygienist will go into the home and once a week will brush and floss a resident's teeth and once a month apply a fluoride. Uh, we've run this program for about 10 years. And the reason we do this is the, the certified nursing assistants basically will spend 18 seconds on average brushing the resident's teeth. Uh, flossing is rarely done. Sometimes the resident won't let them brush or floss. So that food sits there 24 seven, getting into the bloodstream, all the bacteria and things. So we find that uh, four times a month, if we can get in there and brush and floss, they show up with fewer decayed areas and also less, uh, less bleeding, uh, gums are much healthier. Families pay about $200 a month for the program, and it's not covered by insurance. They are so grateful for this uh, because they know what happens when you get decay under a bridge or under a root surface, all the complications that come about from that. Does that fee for the $200 a month go through the nursing home or does it go directly? No, to directly. The dentist bills the family directly. So the home has nothing to do with the billing. Your relationship is basically with the family and the resident. So um, I'll get into what the what the home does for the dentist once they get in there. So um, what is the financial reward for working with these residents? Now, what do you have to do? You have to get into a car. You have to get your staff there. You have to set up. You have to take down. Um, there's some work obviously involved with it, and um, we bill our normal fee. We, uh, I'm, I was never in any PPO plans for those of you that are. Uh, if you have a regular fee, you can bill that at these uh, retirement communities. The average uh, person in a nursing home is paying anywhere from $5,000 to $12,000 a month to be there. So to do a Cleaning exam fluoride for two, three hundred dollars every six months is a bargain. And the families and the patients are glad to cover these costs and they're glad that you're there. Uh, most seniors don't have dental insurance and they expect to pay a fair fee 
for the convenience of having a dentist there. You can charge your office rate or add a surcharge as you see fit. Uh, you can charge a trip charge for going to a home. Uh, plumbers charge it. Why shouldn't dentists? It's allowed. In case uh, re uh, you require more work or consultation, you can certainly charge for your time, whatever you feel is reasonable. So uh, working with insurance, uh, some seniors have Delta dental insurance. Um, some have other programs that are part of their retirement package. If, if you can build, we build those insurance companies and the family get a balance uh, bill after that. Others come in with some odd art program or Medicare Advantage or a magazine coupon that says all their dentistry is covered. Uh, we we explain to the family that most of the times it isn't and that they should expect a bill, but we do bill those. Uh, some have PPO programs. If you're in the if you're not in the PPO, you probably won't get paid. And we let the families know and the families decide whether to haul mom to that dentist or to have you do the, the work and pay you directly. So. There's a program started by United Health called the Optum Program. And this is a program that covers $3,500 for assisted living and $5,000 for nursing home full care. And they cover that in dental care annually with little or no premium. And I mention this because uh, Optum has chosen certain nursing homes to work with. It's an excellent program for a number of reasons. Uh, for those who are on Medicaid, there is no premium. They just sign up for the program and they get those, uh, those reimbursements for dental, dental care. Uh, the dentist does not have to be a UHC provider to enroll in the Optum program. So you wanna look for homes with Optum or consider introducing Optum to the homes that you might be approaching. They cover uh, eyeglasses, uh, hearing aids, and other things. It's, it's a wonderful program. Nothing has changed the Medicaid nursing home care like this Optum has. So you work with private pay patients. Uh, the resident themselves pay. It's always good to explain your fees. Um, they sometimes have a power of attorney and a face sheet has all that information. Family contact, billing, health history, it's all found on the face sheet. Uh, sometimes the family is paying for the resident. Again, you wanna communicate to the family what's in the best interest of your patient. Listen to their concerns, explain fees and, and the options. Always give them options. Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't necessarily Everybody is different as to what they want, and um, we can't always figure that out. So I'm just going to get along here a second. Um, and so how do we get started? Well, one of the first things you want to do is you want to develop uh, a brochure and you want to look up your senior living facilities that are near you. And I have to tell you, they're all over the place and they're popping up regularly. So you walk right in and get ready for multiple visits because the staff is putting off all kinds of fires from giving the wrong meds to the, to the person to families that are upset about a resident's care. Your dental program, although we think that's uh, the neatest thing out there, it's not a priority for them. So you have to be persistent to get into these homes, believe it or not. You introduce yourself to the front desk receptionist, and then with a big smile, you tell them what, who you want to, you want to meet with the person who makes decisions. But that front office receptionist is the gatekeeper. Gather the information of who they think you should see, the head administrator maybe, the director of nursing, social services, and um, have that form ready in an introductory letter. And you're gonna have two minutes to, to uh, introduce yourself 
and explain why dental care is so important. Either you'll be speaking to the administrator or you'll be speaking to the director of nursing and how you'll help the families through good communication that you'll enhance the quality of life for the resident. Everybody wants that. And that you're available to make dentures quickly when lost. And this is important because when they lose the denture, the families are upset because mom is losing weight. If they have a dentist that can come in and get going right away, that makes things a whole lot easier. That you're available 24 seven for dental emergencies, that you have specialists, and that your services bring added marketing value to the facility. There's a lot of competition for residents with the nursing home environment. And as a dentist, your services will, if that could bring in a new resident to the home because you, they have an active dentist on staff, that new resident could bring in $10,000 a month. The woman on the left is my daughter, Dr. Stacy Hajinian Michaels. She worked with me for six years caring for these nursing home residents. And then she decided to be a board certified pediatric dentist. So we're looking for help. <laughs> now the phone doesn't ring. They're not calling you. Here you are, you got everything ready to rock and roll and they're not calling you. Well, you have to be humble. You have to go back, meet that front desk person again, find out how you can get a meeting with them, short two minute meeting. They want you, they need your services. They just don't know how to activate your program. That's why you come back again. And I say, wait two weeks, repeat steps one and two. Um, it may sound kind of, uh, you know, who do they think they are? But again, humble yourself. You're, you're looking out for the residents. That's your main goal that you wanna help these residents. So you do this with multiple homes. And once you become their dental consultant, you're gonna be set for many years to come. Um, you are an associate of yours can continue to work. It's truly rewarding both personally and financially. I can tell you that after 45 years doing this. Um, I, I wanna say too that uh, as a lot of these homes already have a national uh, dental group that kind of comes in every month or every three months, because you can come in on a regular basis at a moment's notice um, within hours or a day, uh, that gives you a little bit advantage over these national chains that are coming into nursing homes. So now that you're in, now what? Well, the facility sends an introductory letter to all of the residents and the families, and that letter should go out every three months offering your services. Uh, social services gets a form for new residents to choose a dentist, an outside dentist, or you. You want to know who you're responsible for. Uh, at the end of this, I, I have a program which has all the forms and everything that you would need. But uh, this is very important to know who you're responsible for. There might be 500 residents in these retirement communities. Uh, you don't want to be getting calls at midnight from somebody unless they're your, under your jurisdiction. So when they come into the home, they choose who they will see, their own family dentist, or will they see you? And um, these are some of the uh, things that we use. The dentists and hygienists are coming. We put the date on there. They put those in the elevators. They put those in the, in the hallways. They email them to the residents. So they basically do the, the marketing for you. And um, stories that you're hearing. You know, so I have to share a couple stories here. Um, the, this is not roller skate dentistry. Uh, you'll be waiting to get for them to have two people to get them in your dental chair. Um, you'll spend some time talking to them. They have life life stories that uh, if you take the time, you'll be really blessed listening to them. I've had a number of men who were in the dental chair that told me they were on the beaches of Normandy in D-Day. Well, I certainly put down the handpiece and listened to their stories for five, 10 minutes. 
I had one woman in the 1980s that uh, sat in a wheelchair, rather heavy lady, and she said she was a wing walker. And I said, uh, what's a wing walker? And those biplanes that they used to have in 1929, she stood in between those two biplane wings, held on to the wires while her boyfriend flew the plane. And uh, they flew over where her mother was hanging the clothes. So she told me her mother made her break up with that boyfriend because she was quite worried about her falling out of the biplane. She told me later on that she married him and they were married for 55 years. So we're caring for wonderful people who've had full lives and it becomes a privilege and you'll develop a passion to care for them. Uh, at first it's a little difficult, but once you get going, you have the talents to to care and to bring uh, health to these people. And I wrote this book, uh, came out last year and it just won the Midwest Publishers Finalist Award, short stories. Uh, some of them are some nursing home stories in there. So it's available on Amazon, a little commercial there. So if you want to, uh, if you want more help, I have a program available uh, for a fee that includes the nursing home forms uh, for social services, nursing staff, includes emailable letters to the families, marketing materials, hard copy brochures, uh, PowerPoint in service. And um, I, the other program I have is the above tools plus four consulting sessions on the topics that I presented in this webinar. How to approach homes, how to find homes, how to present yourself, how to bill various sources, uh, dental treatment options. Uh, as time goes on, you'll get a real feel for what you can do and what you can't do. So feel free to contact me for additional information or pricing. Or if you have a question, again, uh, feel free to email me. Um, we're, as I mentioned earlier, if you'd like to shadow, you can certainly shadow, show you uh, how to care how to work in a retirement community. So, let me get this uh, one more slide over. We can make a difference. This is a neglected population. They have dental needs. And um, with our gifts and our talents, we can take the time half day a month, half day every two weeks, we have a cancellation, we can go and care for these uh, residents. So thanks for listening. I'm going to open it up to any questions that uh, everybody Dr. might Jenny, have. Um, I, I do have some questions that I could read off to you if you're ready for those then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. One that came in is which type of nursing home is the easiest to start in? Would it be the regular nursing home, long-term care, one of the other facilities with uh, where would it be easiest to begin with less hurdles? Well, probably the you can start with a smaller, uh, smaller home. Um, let me go back to that slide of the different kinds that, that are out there. I find that the, um, we go back, should I just go back? I, I've, it's, to me, it didn't really matter the bigger or the, or the smaller ones, but you can find a, a, a memory care place with 20, 20 residents and you can meet with them. And if they allow you to come in, they'll send letters to the families and out of the 20, maybe four will want a dental cleaning and exam. That's not a bad place to start. Um, if you want some place that might have a dental operatory that you can do work, uh, those would be the bigger homes. And you can also, if you go to a bigger home and they don't have a dental operatory, you can talk with them about putting one in. They would be interested in that because it would give them something else that they can market and attract uh, residents. Any other, and another question? Yep, I do have, I have a few more. So 
So um, another one asked, do you have set days during the week or the month solely to focus on your nursing home care carved away out of your schedule? Well, this is a, this is a, a beautiful part of this. You have total freedom. Those residents aren't going to a soccer game. They're not going to Europe. They're just sitting there in their room waiting for you to come and care for them. So you can go there whenever you like. All you have to do is call. There'll be a contact person. You say, I would like to see Mrs. Jones. I'm going to come over there and do a dental cleaning in her room. So they'll make sure Mrs. Jones is in her room at the time when you get there. You can go there when you have a cancellation, a two-hour cancellation in your schedule, or your hygienist has a cancellation. Um, you can go on a set up a morning. One of the things that I found is if I set up a morning, it worked very well and it actually made me more efficient with my schedule. It tightens up your regular office schedule when you have that set aside. So. Excellent. So uh, another question that is here is for your hygienists that go in to nursing homes alone, since that is within their scope to do so, when they report back seeing any issues from their screening that they did on the patient, are you responsible to take care of all of those issues afterwards? So, so you're the dentist and they go into the home and they find things. Now, I, it's my understanding that they're not allowed to, diag to diagnose, but they can sure report what they see. Um, and so they would write down what they see. They come back and they tell you, you need to go then and do an examination to confirm what the hygienist has found. And while you, even before you do that, you can call the family and say, my hygienist has noticed these things. I'm going to go and confirm that. We just want you to know this. Families are going to be so grateful that someone's going into the home and seeing them. Uh, it takes them two, three hours to get them to a dentist. And uh, when you go in there, that's so valuable to them. Excellent. So, and one more question that I had come through is, how did you get your hygienists on staff on board with your program? Or do you use other hygienists that aren't part of your staff to go to the nursing homes? So, in, in my career, I've, I've used my regular staff. I've also used temp temp agency, um, hygienists. Um, I noticed that there are some who have a real passion for this. Others find that uh, it makes them some queasy. Uh, you know, everybody has their, their, their passions. So I find that the, when you spend time with these people, yeah, you look in there and there's food all over the place. But you spend time and you get those mouth clean with a toothbrush and maybe a scaler and floss. Uh, you don't have 45 minutes. You have probably 20 minutes uh, for their ability just tolerating that. And now you look and it's made a difference and you feel good about that. There's a reward that comes with that. So what I say is to these hygienists is join us, join me, sit down, come and do your services. If you don't like it, you don't have to go back. But most of the time, they feel very comfortable after getting over the awkwardness of it, uh, bending over a, a resident who's in a bed. It's not the easiest thing on our backs, but you're bringing a service to somebody that that is going to make a difference in their health. And no one's going to do it unless you do it. And so there's a beauty to that. And the last question that I have here is asking if you coordinate care with any other dentists with specific nursing homes, or you just focus on the care between you and your hygienist going in. Um, well, when you're the, when they come in, when they come into the home, they choose who's going to be their dentist. So you're the dentist that's going to work. Now you, if you have associates, um, and they need a new denture or they need an adjustment, you can certainly send your associate in there. When the home contracts with an office, they know if there's multiple dentists in that office, they know that uh, they're not gonna get just one, one dentist, that they can, uh, other dentists can go and do the, do the work for them. And when I had my practice, uh, we had multiple dentists and they would 
take turns and the patient would say, oh, I'm going to see this dentist today, you know. Um, some of them don't even remember who we are. So that works to our advantage at times. Um, Excellent. So, and that's all the questions I had on this end. So, if anybody else had any other questions that they wanted to either send through or unmute yourself, you'd be more than happy to ask Dr. Higinian here before. No questions from the group? Well, thank you. I, I want to thank the WDA, Erica and Brenna and and uh, Amy here, Brianne, <laughs> and all the rest who helped put this together. So I have my email right up there and my phone number. Feel free to call me if uh, if you have a question or two. I'd be happy to uh, help you get going on all of this. So thank you. For thank your you time. so much, Dr. Virginian. Thank you.